All right, guys, what is up, YouTube? I can't believe it, man. I was looking at my phone the other day and I just realized, but it's already November. And that means in just a couple more weeks, it's going to be December, and we're just that much more closer to 2019. And so I figured, man, how many people are going to start learning code this month? And if you're gonna start learning code today, what is it that you need to do to make sure that you can become a developer in 2019? I'm gonna go ahead and talk about that today. But anyways, I'm on my lunch break right now, so let me drive to work and I'll talk to you guys when I get there. All right guys, so I just got here to the office. If you haven't been watching for a while, this is the first time you're seeing me, then you probably don't know that I just got hired at my second developer job. I work here at Entrepreneur Magazine, Entrepreneur Media, and man, it has been a journey. I've been working here for, I believe, more than three months now. So I left my first developer job, this is my second developer job, and the things I'm learning at my new company is insane. I'm so used to working on very basic JavaScript projects, little basic Vue.js projects at my first job, and coming here to code base at the company is just gigantic to me at least there's a lot of new things I'm learning I've been working here three months but I'm still learning the code base I'm still learning how they do the jQuery and how everything works at this company it's so new to me I'm learning so much and I think the biggest thing I've benefited from from moving on to a larger company is the fact that I'm doing so many things that I never did in my first one I'm working at a much faster pace I'm working with a team where at my last job I did everything on my own I'm working with actually very talented UI UX designers who know what they're doing and they know how to make something look nice and now I'm slicing up those PSDs to make it into real life. It's a brand new world but I'm learning so much and that's why I really feel that as I'm here now in my second job, I want to help out those who are starting today and how you can get your first developer job. What it is that you need to do to make sure that you can become a web developer in 2019. And from the experience I'm learning from this job and the wisdom I'm getting from my boss, my manager, and even other developers here too, there are a lot of things that I did not know until I joined this company. So I really hope that today's video can help you guys out. So let me get into the office. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, what's up everyone? It is now the end of the day. It is Friday night. Oh my gosh. It's actually 6 p.m. now in the day. Almost everyone left. My boss is still here. The senior developer is still here. They're working hard while I'm here making a YouTube video. <laughs> If you guys made it this far into the video, you're watching because you want to become a developer, a web developer particularly, and you want to make a change in your life. So what I want to talk about is what you need to start doing now to make sure that you become a web developer within 2019. But before we begin, man, maybe you've been trying to find a job already too, right? Maybe you're really interested in really in making a change in your life and you still can't get that job as well. Maybe that's why you're watching this video. Well then, that's why I want to introduce you to actually today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is actually from studywebdevelopment.com. Study Web Development started in 2018 this year, and since then, hundreds of people have invested in it. And since then, there have been many people who've been able to either have a part-time income side hustle, or there have been people who've actually been able to go full-time in as well. And if you're wondering and how you can freelance as a developer, make sure you check these guys out. I'm gonna go ahead and put my link in the description below. So check them out if you haven't, but let's go ahead and go into how you can become a developer by 2019. Let's talk about that right now. Let's lay here and waste that time. I'm gonna love you like crazy. Waste that time. I went on Instagram and on Instagram what happened is that I actually asked a question. What do you think people need to do to make sure to become a developer in 2019? And I, I figured this is important to do because you know, I have my own opinions on how you can change your life and how you can become a dev in 2019, but I figured I'd also share for you guys what other people all around the world are saying too. So I'm gonna go through these as quickly as possible, then I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what you need to do after this. Risha said, learn React as thoroughly as possible. True. 
Developer dude said by just putting in the work and having two thirds of a portfolio. I'm not too sure what you mean by that, but yes, you do have to have a portfolio. You have to put in the work. All right, let's see what else people said. Tan says Treehouse, boom. If you want to become a freelance developer too and you don't know any code, check out Treehouse as well. Rory Vander Western says, tried to roll into an IT traineeship, internship, then did he did one in 1.5 years in the Netherlands and now he's a meteor. I'm not sure what that means, maybe a mentor. Okay, my name is Team Treehouse, eight hours a day, boom. <laughs> Everyone likes Treehouse, I wonder why, man. They must be pretty amazing. Okay, not, hey, yeah, it says practice every day. Eddie Zip says doing side projects. Nick Lawrence Coates says I think it's consistently and not and not giving up. Very true. Gangster and the Norse says by Harry Potter's magic trick. Bro, come on, man. <laughs> Jaloma says hard work, dedication, commitment. That is the only way I know how to be good at something. Very true as well. Black Mamba says Team Treehouse. Flo says learning JavaScript with some frameworks. Okay. So you see everyone's suggestions here. You know, people have their own suggestions in regards to either going to university or something and etc. Um, different ways to learn Treehouse, practicing, building a portfolio. These are all basic things you need to do and things I do want to touch on right now. So let's go ahead and talk about this right now. So what it is that you need to do to become a developer in 2019? If you were to start now, number one thing is first you have to start. The one thing that holds people back from accomplishing anything is what? It's fear that you won't succeed, but you can't succeed unless you try. Every time you try to accomplish something, there will always be a possibility that you can fail. But it's okay, it's through those failures you get better, right? You need the number one first and you have to make a decision to start. Then where do you start? You could try different places. There's free code camp, there's Google, there's YouTube videos. I learned from Treehouse. I became a developer in three months. People become a developer in six months. I've seen people become a developer in two months. I've seen people become a developer in a year and a half. You have to find a way where you can learn code. Some people don't use any resource. Some people use books. And what I liked about Treehouse was the fact that they had all these different courses you could use to learn as your guide. Okay, so you find a resource. Maybe it's Udemy, maybe it's Udacity, maybe it's Treehouse, whatever you use, right? Maybe it's just YouTube tutorials. The question then is once you make a decision to start and you do start, the question then is what is it that you need to do to make sure you get hired? And that's the most important thing. There are many people I know that have gone to college and what they went to college for, they don't even use to make a living. I know countless of people who have a business degree and yet they're doing customer service jobs, they're doing office jobs, office assistant. I know people who got a business degree who are working at McDonald's, right? I know people who got a history degree and now what are they doing? They're a medical assistant. Why? Because they couldn't get a job with their history degree. I know people who have a writing degree and don't even do anything with writing. Some people try to but they realize it doesn't pay as well so they try to do something else. So when it comes to making a decision for your life and your future, you have to make sure you make the right decision. That's what I'm trying to say. So when it comes to web development, you have to make sure you study the languages, the frameworks, the libraries, the tools, you learn the tools that are in demand today. And so let's say you want to become a web developer, the basics, first of all, you have to learn front-end development. Unless you're becoming a back-end developer, but let's talk about front-end development right now. What you need to know is number one, you need to know HTML. HTML is used to create the DOM, where you structure everything on a website, but then after you learn HTML, you need to learn CSS. And what does CSS does, it makes what is ugly, like Craigslist.com, to something that is beautiful. Every website in the world uses HTML and CSS. That is used to design a site. But let's say you have a static site. Now you just have a site that does nothing. You could click from many pages, but when you look at many websites today, many different websites have functionalities. They have ads, they have, well, if you click on something, it hides, or when you scroll a certain position, this, that's my boss right behind me. What that does is that it actually, oh man, I lost my train of thought because the boss is right there. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Anyways, you learn these just the different things. HTML, CSS, but now you need to be able to make even a basic website. Un unless you have something to show for your skill, no one will want to hire you. And that's a fact. So you build something simple. Then what you need to do next, you need to learn something called JavaScript, which is the first programming language that you will learn. JavaScript is highly in demand today. Every developer, at least front-end developer, has to know JavaScript, professional developer, wherever you go. JavaScript is used and all browsers throughout the entire world. Why? It's through JavaScript is how you interact with the website. Now, as you're learning JavaScript, what happened? You already made your, web, your, your portfolio, right? You learn HTML, you learn CSS, but as you're learning JavaScript, the mistake that many people do is that they just learn it, but they don't apply it. So once you have this website you made with HTML and CSS, what you need to do next is while you're learning JavaScript, you learn to apply the, that JavaScript, that language you're learning to your website. Maybe you learn how to hide something after you click it. Then what you need to do is that put something on your website, even if it makes no sense, when you click on it, you hide it and you save it there. 
Now what do you do next? You learn things like maybe you learn to do Ajax calls. You learn how to pull data from Twitter to put on your website. Then you do API call. You learn that, right? Maybe Treehouse teaches you how to do that. Then what you need to do is that on your website, you have to learn how to do API calls and pull, use that on your website. Maybe you want to use Google Maps or maybe you want to do something Ajax. And so as you're learning these different things like when it comes to JavaScript, right, you have to apply it to your website. And as you're building that website, that becomes your portfolio. That becomes your tool to show them why they need to hire you. Now, what do you learn after HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? Is that enough? There will be many times for many companies that's not enough. Now, what you need to do to make sure that you're hireable, that people want to hire you, is that you have to know something called a framework like maybe AngularJS, or maybe a library like Vue.js, or React.js. Those are the top three popular JavaScript frameworks and libraries today. If you go everywhere on Indie.com, Craigslist, even technical recruiters, what companies are looking for are people who know React. Now, when you go from JavaScript and you start learning a framework or library, this is when it really shows how bad you want it because I guarantee you 110% it will be very difficult to learn. There will be many times you want to give up. But I'll tell you this, depending on how bad you want it, if you're willing to persevere, ask questions and feel stupid and feel stupid again and feel stupid even three times, if you're willing to persevere through that, what will happen is that as you push yourself to learn these different languages in either six months, eight months, nine months, 12 months, you have that portfolio. You're able to create something and as you're learning in these frameworks and you apply it to your website that you've made for yourself, what will that do? That will show why a company wants to hire you. And the interesting thing is this, companies are not looking for the best developers. Of course, they want the best developers, but even many times they can't afford them too. What are they looking? They're looking for people who have the potential to do well. How do you show that potential though? How do you show that a company should hire you by which you've been able to create thus far? But even more than that, how you're able to conversate with them when you do your first interview, right? And there are many different things too. What you need to do next is you have to make sure while you're learning these things, and these are tools, you have to learn to use the command line. You have to learn to work with maybe GitHub or something where you can commit your projects. And these are things that you do professionally in a company. And there's so many more things I can say. Build multiple projects, challenge yourself. Learn when you build a project, it's not just building it one time. Now take that project that you built and build it in a better way. Use less code, use less JavaScript, use maybe less CSS to make it load faster. You're working with APIs or etc. You have to make it a goal. Every single week as a developer, you have to be better than you were last week. If you want to even get, go even further than that, how you were yesterday, you have to make sure you're better today, but what can you do to make sure you're better today? This journey to becoming a developer in 2019 is not going to be easy. It's probably gonna be one of the most difficult things you'll ever do because you're learning a computer language. You're learning how computers speak and how websites speak from one website to another. You're learning things that you, not many people in the world are able to do. But hey, that's why we get paid as much as we do, right? That's why we get paid as well, and that's why we're treated so well at our companies as well. If you have any other questions though as well, you can join my Discord channel, and you can hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. So thank you guys for watching. I'll end the video here. This is Krishan. This is Lifeboat Developer, and I'm out.